One of the fun things here at Cayucas Elementary School District is the access to animals. So Alyssa, tell me a little bit about what you enjoy. Um, I enjoy playing with the chickens at recess in the garden. And we bring them into the <laughs> And we bring them into the compost so that they can peck for worms and bugs and stuff. Excellent. Well, thank you. So everybody, which school rocks? Cayucas! Ann Hubbard is the superintendent for Cayucas Elementary School District. She's served as a principal in a comprehensive middle school and a larger elementary school district. And uh, so Ann, one of the questions I have for you sure. is, uh, tell me one of the differences you see between this small campus environment and the larger campuses you've worked in before. Um, well, the fact that this was a small school district was so attractive to me because it really is like a family here. Um, I'll have to say there isn't um, a student on this campus that doesn't have multiple adults that know about them, know what their struggles are, know what their strengths are, know when they're having issues, know how to take really good care of them. Um, every kid here is, I mean, there's so many supports under each student here because we are a small district in a really tight-knit community. That was um, a huge attraction for me to a, to a small district. And Cayucas is known for thinking outside the box. <laughs> what are some of the things that you see uh, that excite you about? Uh... Oh my gosh. Um, again, just such a neat element about being a one school district is you don't have to try to do this um, one size fits all for all these multiple campuses. You really get to say, what is it that your kids want to do? What do they need? What's going to really enrich them? So. You can find almost anything here. <laughs> um, I remember you telling me it was kind of a flip-flop community, not meaning that they flip-flop their minds, but that they're very casual. Along with that casualness, though, comes incredible creativity. We have, um, people have passions here, and they're, they're really willing to share those passions. And so you have things like the STEAM project and our geodesic dome. Ron Wilson is one of the trustees here at Cayucas Elementary School District and he has spearheaded this project. Tell us about the, the dome here, Ron. We got recycled uh, bicycle rims and uh, we had a model. So they learned about making a model is something you wanted to do. Making a prototype, we broke it down, did it again. And we've shown this now at the uh, Makerspace Expo and at the Farmer's Market. And, uh, and we also did 3D printing to show the kids and to show adults what was possible and connecting the two things. You have um, the community support to give the swimming lessons. Teaching the classes that I took when I went there, so it's, uh, it's different, but it's, it's fun. I wouldn't have it any other way. We have, as you know, a phenomenal, phenomenal music program here where kids are getting um, to play violins and steel pan drums and uh, we're going to be bringing in tubas and string instruments and um, the drama program that we have here. Just even within the classrooms, what teachers can do because um, they, they really, we've, we've taken away the limits. If somebody wants to do something, the answer is always, yeah, sure, yeah, let's try it. So that, that part is really, really just a neat part of Cayucas. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing your yeah. campus with yeah. me today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. We're mining for gold today because today is gold rush at, at our school. It must have been hard. Some people left their families for it and they were searching everywhere. Gold rush day in fourth grade is a tradition. We've been doing it for probably close to 30 years. And the kids come to school dressed like miners, westerners, and they learn about the gold rushes in California. And then they pan for gold, and all the gold, gold they get to keep. And then they go to an assayer's office where they find out the price of gold. Um, today's gold was $1,223 an ounce. Then after that, we had lunch, we barbecued beans and tri-tip and salad and bread and they really ate better than the miners did. The whole point of Gold Rush is to show the kids that California history is like a story of the past and when you make it a story then the kids really get into it and so this afternoon they're going to spend their gold at the watering hole. 
because that's what the Gold Rush people did. They got their gold and they spent it as quick as they got it. People from all over the world were coming to, just to California to mine for gold. We get all the electives and our teachers are great. We did a California mural and uh, if you can see over there at the L, you've got your gold prospector with the gold nugget up above. This community is extremely supportive of the arts and they were looking for somebody just like me to come in and bring art back into the school. So it kind of originated with the Cayucas Art Association and then over time uh, became so well received by the public that it just sort of became a regular thing here at the school. They created what's called the Cayucas Education Foundation, which also helps to support the arts, including drama and music as well. Even the mural itself continues to evolve. Each year we can have the middle school students working on it, you know, adding things, changing things. Uh, it's kind of an ever-evolving uh, project. We've been doing the recycling project since last year. Um, it's a third grade initiative that I took last year when I saw all the paper that was being thrown away. And um, we continued it this year and made it a bigger project by incorporating food waste in the cafeteria because I could see how much food was being thrown away. And it was breaking my heart to see all of that. And we've reduced our recycling, or our trash from 95% to 8% for the entire school. So our recycling, as you can see, is clearly overfulling every week. So we've turned our school into a zero waste. They're totally enjoying themselves. They took the initiative to build PowerPoints, each student, and then each group went to a different class in the school, presented that PowerPoint to show the students how to recycle and, and, and do food waste appropriately. I don't know, guys, how do your parents like it? <laughs> um, I think there's dragon tongue, there's kale, there's green leaf. So as you can see, Grace here has got this beautiful bunch of greens. And as you walk around with the kids in the garden, you'll see what they're harvesting for today. And yesterday they actually harvested, Olivia harvested kale for their red bean minestrone soup we made in the gardening home ec uh, class that we've been doing uh, as an elective. So this is kind of spreading out throughout the school, kind of a dream come true, because it's a living, edible schoolyard. This is green leaf lettuce, and I really like this garden because it's really nice to have all the stuff here provided by the school, and it's fun to have a gardening class at the school because most schools don't have the opportunity to garden while doing your classes. Um, it makes me feel really happy because you kind of get that feeling that you have provided something to the lower grades and other kids at the school where you get to eat the products that we have grown organically and there's no like harsh chemicals on them. And, um, it makes me feel really happy because if you haven't talked to someone then you get to kind of meet new people and friends and you get to just be friends with everyone and you learn new stuff about people. My favorite part about this is be able to eat it after you're done. That, that feeling of satisfaction that you did, uh, you accomplished something, is very good. About 15 years ago, we had the garden in the ground and we came up here and started the first garden. And then Dr. Brescia got me a grant last year and we put in redwood beds here and down in the cafeteria area where my home and garden class has a second garden down there. These teenagers, young teenagers, then um, got compost every year. They wheelbarrowed it out. They made compost last year. They mixed it. And then they researched what would go well here, and then they started their garden. And this just ended up being a beautiful project where they um, take it home and they provide for the cafe. Then it ended up being herbs and flowers also. Well, we make chapsticks and lotions out of the calendula petals, and for our class, we're doing projects where we make the lip balm and chapstick and things in our class. It feels really good, and it really helps soothe your lips when they're dry and chapped and stuff like that. 
sadly this year we haven't had that much water so luckily the calendula grows with not that much water so we've grown a lot of it so that's why we can make so much chapstick. The calendula they all they heal and they also attract the bugs because they have like a strong smell and stuff so all the bugs will go there and usually they ignore our vegetables. Well, well we use beeswax to like cement it together and then you know mix it all with heat and yeah comes out as an awesome lip balm. Here again at Cayucas Elementary School District, uh, a place that's near and dear to my heart, a campus in which I served as the principal superintendent. And uh, my right hand here, uh, Hannah Held, has uh, served the district for many years. And there's a lot of research on K-8 schools and why they're so successful. What do you see that makes Cayucas such a special place? Well, um, kindergarten through eighth grade districts are special. Um, I went to one myself to a school with kindergarten through eighth grade students and I loved it. Um, I think what's special about Cayucas Elementary School is that we do have that, that span of grades. The older students look out for the younger students. The younger students look forward to seeing their big buddies. Um, we, are, we operate as one big happy family and everybody knows everybody and that's really helpful in terms of the success of our students. You were also recently acknowledged for your exemplary service as the, the Confidential Assistant of the Year Award uh, for the county. How do you feel about that? I, well, I feel honored, of course. Um, it was a nice, uh, a nice nomination from Superintendent Ann Hubbard, and um, I do have to give a shout out to my co-workers. I couldn't do my job without their love and support. And, and then also to the other confidential administrative assistants in the county. They do a lot of work that nobody really knows about or understands, but they make sure that their schools run smoothly all year long. If you had to think of one word that describes the special environment here at Cayucas, what would it be? I would say, um, I would say family. That's wonderful. I'm thrilled to be here with Victoria Doust, who is the most dramatic person on campus. She's actually our drama instructor here, extraordinaire. She's an accomplished author. Uh, and you started this program, the Black Tie Beach Day, but you had to wait until I left Cayucas to do this? Well, that was the plan. We did. It was part of our school's Including Everyone project with the middle school. What we did is we had a beach day, which, as you know, we do several times a year as an incentive and a reward project. But we asked everyone to dress up formally, and we made sure that everyone who wanted to had a costume of some sort and everything that we did, surfing, swimming, digging holes, everything was done either in a dressy dress or in a suit and tie and it was hilarious. The kids had a great time. Teachers dressed up. It was fabulous. I recommend all schools do this. That's wonderful. I'm going to get my tux from the cleaners and invite me for next year. We will do that. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,